Welcome to another episode of Crime Pays But Botany Doesn't. Today I'm in a, a population of one of Florida's rarest plants. I feel like that applies to like six or seven different species, more than that probably. In Central Florida, there's like six or seven different species of extremely rare plants, only known from, you know, between one and five locations. But anyway, this is this is one of them. This is Pseudozyphus salata, and as you can see, it's occurring in a cleared cattle pasture and due to the last 80 to 100 years of intense fire suppression in central Florida, which is a, a habitat and a region where fire uh, was such a strong part of the ecology for so long. Due to the intense amount of fire suppression here, the cattle grazing that's going on has actually been beneficial to it. Now, Pseudozyphus uh, salata, this plant, uh, is uh, resistant to cattle grazing because it's got divericate branching, zigzag branching patterns, and thorns, and so it uh, it's it's not so palatable. You know, there's other if there's other shit to chew on, cattle are definitely going to go for that. They don't want to get you know poked in the mouth, etc. But this is a very uh, remarkable species. Its closest relative occurs uh, 3,000 miles away in the deserts of California, Pseudozyphus perii. This is a member of the buckthorn family, Ramnaceae, and it, you can see clearly here it occurs on this yellow sand. So let's go check it out. So there right there is a population of Pseudozyphus salata. You can see it's also there and there uh, and uh, scattered about here. Oh look, somebody... Uh, Somebody left their chonies. I always wonder how that happens, you know? How did such a thing occur? Anyway, um, you could obviously see there's cattle turds everywhere. The cattle are keeping all the uh, plant life that would otherwise be competing and smothering the sun-loving species down. And this is the plant right here, this Pseudozyphus. You can see it's got, uh, it's got entire leaf margins, and I'm going to mention that because that uh, there's a plant that grows... Uh, in the same habitat as St. Patrick species, you can see it right there. That's a Crataegus species. That's a Hawthorn species that's evolutionarily converged on that same zigzagging branching, which I think is pretty remarkable. So something in the evolutionary history of this region was selecting for that. Some sort of herbivore. You know, you see that divericate branching structure in New Zealand. They can also call it geniculate, geniculate uh, branching. I like divericate because it's the uh, it's just what I what I learned it as in New Zealand, where it was a phenomenon, a result of the coevolution with the now extinct giant bird, the moa. But uh, as you can see, the leaves on Pseudozyphus are entire; they don't have that serrate margin on them. Right? A small petiole, and uh, of course, they've got that branching that makes them so so unique. That divericate branching. Texas ebony's do the same thing. There's a number of plants in Madagascar that do the same thing. Again, it's a it's thought to be, and almost certainly is. A result of uh, herbivory deterrence, you know, something selects for it. it, makes a little cage around the flowers. But this pseudozyphus uh, has been having some reproductive uh, failures. It's it's not been there's not been a lot of recruitment, and it's thought to be because many of these these what seem like individuals are actually all the same clone. You know, they form these colonies. I mean, you can very clearly see that over there is all the same clone. So due to this clonal nature of this species, uh, recruitment has not been uh, very successful. There's not a lot of seeds getting produced. I would assume there are in this, at this spot, because this is the largest population of them, and it seems like there's a few different genetic individuals. Who knows how long the same uh, individual can, can live, but uh, oh, nice, tart nice tortoise bro, look at that. See, somebody's living in there. Tortoises and eastern diamondbacks. But um, anyway, the, the point is, it's, you know, it's, it's not doing too hot. This species is not doing too hot. And I guess supposedly you'll see it here and there uh, occasionally in some of the sand scrub around. But again, there's been so much habitat destruction and land clearance in this region for things like citrus farms and suburbs. And then, of course, the fire suppression on top of that uh, just ends up leading to this species getting smothered. Look at that, look at that lupinus. Is that the lupinus cumulicola? Anyway, uh, that's yeah, that's definitely all the same individual. I'd love to be here when it's flowering. The flowers are tiny, tiny flowers, axillary flowers, like so many members of the buckthorn family, Ramnaceae. Is that another uh, tortoise burrow there? Man, there's just tortoise city right here. There's a ton of them living here. But I guess there's been, they tried to plant some out at Archibald uh, Biological Research Station. Uh, which is also on Lake Wales Ridge, a little bit south of here. But those plants are small, and they're still very small. I guess they grow pretty slowly, too. But you can see they don't really get that big. They don't top out 
at more than three or four feet and they're easily confused with this Crataegus species, this hawthorn species. But when you look at the hawthorn species, you can see it's got a much different uh, leaf shape when you get up close. See, there's the hawthorn. You can see that, look, it's got the dentate margin on it too. Like so many members of the rose family, rosaceae. Little black glands, at least on that one. And some of the leaves of the hawthorn can be rather large too. It'll have leaves like this, these little paddle shaped leaves, then it'll have leaves that are damn near two inches. But there's, again, going for that, those spines and that divericat branching, which is so cool. So something was selecting for probably a, a now extinct uh, bird, maybe a large, large bird or some sort of now extinct mammal. Something that was large. It wasn't just deer that did this. Nice cow patty. Oh, sometimes they get those uh, pan cyans, those paniolus mushrooms in there. That'll be a treat to, to walk up on. Anyway, uh, looks like these are all the same individual, yeah. Love to know what the habitat here looked like 300 years ago. Christ, it must have been incredible. Look at you, you old lovely, you old lovely, adorable, crusty bastard. Look at all covered in lichens, leafless. I'm going to take it that branch is dead. Got some Tillandsia recurvata on there as well. And then we got leaves right there. And there's a couple individuals I've seen over there uh, in that shade. Look at, look at that dense Tillandsia usneoides on those oaks. God, such a cool habitat. So this is a case where cattle grazing has actually been beneficial. I mean, you see it occasionally. It can be beneficial. The cattle leave this spiny bastard alone and they really go for uh, for everything else, all the uh, uh, more palatable herbaceous stuff. You look at those glistening glabrous leaves, different hues of dark and light green, but you got that entire margin and they're conduplicate leaves. They're folded in the center. Oh, there we go. There's another uh, divericate or somewhat divericate branching. It's just got those stiff, turning its branches into spines. It's got distinct branching patterns. Sideroxylon tenax from the family Sapitaceae. Beautiful leaves, russety orange undersides and glabrous tops. Abovate leaves. There's the tiny flowers and uh, there's the fruit. Edible fruit. We're seeing this in the, in the white sand scrub, the more nutrient poor white sand scrub and it was topping out at like three or four feet. Didn't see one this big. Also got Diosporos virginiana over there, the persimmon. See, that's what happens when you don't burn. That's what happens when you suppress fire. And that's relatively open, too. I mean, it gets, you driving up here, you look on the sides of the roads, it's a lot more smothered than that. Fire suppression, then you add invasive species. This is all Elephantopus down there. Elephantopus, it just hasn't flowered yet. Look, we got an Asclepius humistrata, Asclepius humifrustrata. Yeah, that's a fucking beautiful milkweed. Oh, God. But those don't flower till, uh, what, spring? spring? Yeah. It's wild, man. Check the, hey, check the cow patties for, uh, for mushrooms. You never know. Paniola cyanescens out here, too. Oh, is that a Diosporos coming up right in the middle there? Looks like it, huh? Yeah, why are you so rare? I wonder how they take from cuttings. Probably not that well. Oh, look at that. That's a nice money shot of foliage right there. Look at those leaves. Beautiful. Older growth is a brown. New growth is a green. So photosynthetic. Photosynthetic stems when a tissue is young and then as it hardens off and lignifies, becomes brown. Yeah, I haven't seen any taller than, than like this. Liking on everything. So the fruit, when it matures, is presumably a capsule, a dried the hissin capsule, uh, as is common in Ramnaceae. But I don't, I don't even see any evidence of that. I don't see evidence of flowers. I don't see evidence of fruits. You know, this is maybe this is like the panda that wouldn't bang to save its life. Who knows? It's a beautiful plant, though. Oh, there's a flower bud up there. Uh, look who's flowering. Asimina abovada. You can see the ovary in there. Oh, good. Actually, you can't see the ovary. Those are just stamens that are not mature yet. And then in the center are the different styles. It's probably protogenous. Since this is a basal angiosperm family, 
God, that smell, it actually smells kind of like a pawpaw. Must be those same uh, similar chemicals. And the flower is in the fruit. There's the calyces. Oh, nice red margin to it. Red pubescent margin. You know those chemicals that are causing Parkinson's if you really if you really go nuts on these, if you splurge on them. You're not supposed to eat too many pawpaws at once. Yeah, I don't see any recruitment, man. It's wild. I see where this plant's in danger. There's, <laughs> there's really not a lot of them. It's like two or three clonal populations. What pollinates them? Do they bang successfully? How is the fruit? How is the, the seed production, I wonder? Oh, nice Calicarpa Americana. That's a nice one. It's got to be lonely out here. Plenty of Asimina, plenty of Diasporos, not much Pseudozyphus. How long since Pseudozyphus salata and Pseudozyphus perii diverged from a common ancestor? What's that? Is that pigs doing it? I heard some hogs in the bushes yesterday. God, if I was armed, I would have shot them. Don't judge, you know. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's fine to just randomly fire into the bushes when you hear... Wild pigs rustling around. Yeah, look at this. This weeping hawthorn is cool too. God damn. This is a this is kind of a rare plant too, at least a, an endemic. It's not rare where it occurs in the habitat, but it's it's only known from a very small area of central Florida. Yeah, man, what something was something was fucking with these plants in the past. You know, was it extinct ground sloths you know what, what what could it have been it wasn't it's not just deer some of that extinct megafauna some that's not around anymore yeah there's there's other crataegus lepida and then we got sideroxx lantenax as well this one's not as big as the one i just showed you over there this one's staying small no pseudozyphus right here though plenty of opuntia been bit by those before and then we got forming little colonies we got the vine gelsemium from gelsemiaceae in the order gentianales and see it with those opposite leaves glabrous leaves lanceolate leaves and then over there what lily's taking a picture of is the baptisia lecantii lecant those baptisia like those baptisia leaves those trifid baptisia leaves it's so glaucous I think there's only like two. Did you see any more? I just saw two or three populations of the, uh, yeah, not of the, uh, not of the pseudozyphus. How many did you see? Two or three total? I would see. I think there are about four, maybe. Four. Jesus Christ! But there's. I don't see any recruitment, man. Ooh, Erythrina herbacea. It's a nice one. Beautiful red flowers when it goes off. There's another one. The cattle keep it pretty tightly mowed. Except for these little, these little colonies of plants. Oh wow, that's a massive tortoise burrow. Holy shit. Jesus. Looks like somebody excavated. And just good old Quercus virginiana. Got acorns on it. And then we got this guy. First one I've seen in the last 10 minutes. After I circled back around. You ever seen a coach whip climbing a tree before? Look at how good he is at what he's doing. Oh, he's beautiful. I didn't know. Oh, you beautiful little. Look at that fucking guy. Look. Freaking acrobat over there. Look at you. Look at him. Look at you hanging out up there. You mastocophus? Is that, is that what you're doing up there? You're hanging out in, you're hanging out in that Sidorox Latinx. Look at, him, look at me with that fish eye. I'm not gonna fuck with you, I just wanna take some photos. Beautiful. God, he went up that thing like it was nobody's business, man. He was in that tree when we walked up, and then he, he was eating something, and then he dropped it and came up here. It's better than going in a hole. At least this way I could still lurk on you and take some nice photos. Oh, look at him, he's... <laughs> oh, he's curious. He's looking right at me. He's, what's going on, pal? Just gonna take some photos and we'll be out of we'll be out of your way. 
Yeah, those things are fast as hell. He couldn't, man, he moved so goddamn fast. It was, well, he couldn't stand a chance of catching them. I dropped the umbrella. Guys, take it easy. We don't have any food. Come on. Oh, shit. I was just coming over there to thank you for the work you've done conserving the species. You got to take it. Yeah, take it easy. Come on. Got the little umbrella. Yeah, just curious my ass. It's, that's how it starts, you know. You don't seem so bad. You're drooling on yourself. And now it's showing me its ass. All right. Anyway, so you can see here's another, here's another, I don't know if this is, there's nothing around it, so I wonder if it's just a different individual or what. But here's that pseudo again, and they're losing their leaves for the winter, for the winter dry season. Now with the, presumably with the onset of rains, they'll come out again. That invasive abutilon in the middle of it. Oh, look, a little, little asimina popping up in the uh, cattle wallow. And these are weird to see. This is Juniperus salicicola, which has not been split out. It's still lumped in with Juniperus virginiana, but it looks so different. How is this not classified as a different species? It's a taxonomic crime. Looks like the genus Calitris, the Australian Capressoid genus Calitris. Look at how wispy that foliage is. Look at that. That's not, that's not Eastern Red Seer. That's not Juniperus virginiana. Ah, uh, you got a monarch caterpillar, a tiny one. He just started on those waxy leaves of Asclepius humistrata, humifrustrata. One of the most important species uh, of milkweed for monarchs in Florida. Anyway, so there's that main population. Hopefully uh, there's someone growing it more. I guess they, they pop up occasionally, like I said, in, uh, in scrub, you'll see them. But this is a... Uh, this is the largest population of them, and most of it's clonal. Probably only four or five genetic individuals. Not to be confused with Crit Critagus lepida. Anyway, that's all I got. Have a great day. Go figure this out. Bye.